Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah here on this October 25th, uh, 2024. Jumu'ah Mubarakah. That is, may Allah bless you with a blessed Jumu'ah day, Friday. So let me begin by calling the Adhan. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan Rasulullah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan Rasulullah. Hayya ala salah, hayya ala salah, hayya ala al-falah, hayya ala al-falah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, that is the praises to Allah, the praises to Allah, the garden evolver, cherisher, and sustainer of all of the world and all of the systems of knowledge. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lahu, wa ashhadu an muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa alihi wa sabbihi. Ejma'in. That is, I bear witness, there's no deity but the one deity, God alone, whose name is Allah in the Arabic language, spoken by Christians as well. They view Allah's name as a name that they can use, and they are Christians in Jordan and Syria and different places like that. So I bear witness, there's no deity but the one deity, God alone, whose name in Arabic is Allah, and there's none like unto him. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that is the prayers and the peace and blessings forever be upon Muhammad, the African Arab prophet. I'm adding that to remind the African Americans that those camel jockeys, you may not like them, but they got a beautiful language that Allah revealed this Quran in, so you should embrace the Arabic language and the Quran if you don't embrace the camel jockeys that you may have bad encounters with uh, at the uh, stores uh, out here in America. Praise be to Allah. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa lahu akbar, wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah, wa huwa al-aliyul adheem. And it's Almighty God is free from all imperfection, all the praises due to Allah, God is greater than anything you can imagine or do. And there's no deity except God alone. And he is the mighty, the exalted, the wise. Praise be to Allah. So continuing the khutbah, I have entitled this particular khutbah, Highly Glorified and Exalted is Allah above anything that you can imagine or witness. So this wonderful phrase is found in the Quran in the uh, Surah 6 verse 100. So bear with me to come to it here and I'll just read the English and then just read the Arabic portion of it of the statement that I just mentioned. Highly glorified and exalted is he. Yet they make the jinns equal with Allah, though Allah did create jinns, and they falsely having no knowledge attribute to him, that is Allah, sons and daughters. Praise and glory be to him, for he is high above what they attribute to him. The portion of the uh, verse is, Subhanahu wa ta'ala 
عما يصفون. So many times you hear people say, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, as though they believe that Allah, the word Allah is in that particular uh, phrase, but it is not. The word that's there is wa ta'ala. Wa ta'ala. So again, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, 6100 of the Quran. Amma yasifun. Translated, glory to him. And he is exalted high above what you all or anybody try to attribute to, to him. Praise be to Allah. So this word, subhana, <coughs> excuse me, subhana. Many times you hear people put a P in there. They say, subhanallah, when someone make a mistake uh, reciting Quran in the prayer or if something happens that they don't think is you know right, they'll say, subhanallah. They put a P in there, you know. <laughs> and there are no P's in Arabic, none at all. So the best way I can give you an example of how to pronounce it is remember that vehicle, the Subaru. So it's subhanallah. Subhanallah, Subhanallah wa ta'ala. Continuing on. This beautiful verb, Sabaha, is in the Quran at least 94 times. I counted it earlier to, uh, yesterday, and I was able to look up the uh, verbal root in this concordance of the Quran. So I would encourage you to get this particular concordance or use the uh, Quran Corpus on the internet. Again, Quran Corpus, C O R P U S. So I counted, if I counted correctly, 94 times. And it's very interesting for you to know that Allah is emphasizing that you should give glory and praise and thanks to Him. Not because He likes to be patted on the on the mind or patted on the on the back, or whatever you want to put in that uh, padding, is that the more and more you and I glorify and witness and appreciate all of his wonderful things that he has created, the better our lives can be. So we want to be in a situation where we are consciously conscious, if you will, of Allah in everything that we do. This is the focus that Muslims should be about. This is the focus that Christians should be about is to be pleasing to our Lord in everything that we do that we know that we're not going to be perfect beings but we know that that is the focus to try to stay on the shirat al mustaqim the straight path in fact if you look in the Hansworth dictionary the word mustaqim means a geometrically straight line a geometrically straight line I guess that's the best way to put that We'll just simply say a straight line. Praise be to Allah. So, in the Quran, so beautifully, Allah says this to us, or reveals this to us. Seest thou not that it is Allah whose praises all beings in the heavens and on earth do celebrate, and the birds of the air with wings outspread. Each one knows its own moat. <coughs> excuse me, mode or way of prayer and praise. And Allah knows well all that they do. In that particular Arabic verse, we have the beautiful content there where it says, Wasalatihu wa tesbihahu, meaning every creature, the birds, the human beings, we know our way of prayer. You know, the prayer of the Muslim is to stand in the standing position and recite our Fatiha, the first chapter of the Quran, and then we declare to keep it in unison, the bowing, Allahu Akbar, and then we come down to our knees in what we call Ruku position, right? And as we are doing that, we say, Sami Allah, holy man, Hamida. And then we come back up. And then we go all the way back down to the floor. 
in what we call the sajda position, the position of prostration. And most of you know that the word masjid coming from the root sing, jim, and dal, meaning a place of prostration. So not just the physical masjid, as you know, is the place of prostration, but Allah tells us in the Quran that the whole universe is a masjid, a place of prostration and glorification of him. So when we speak of glorification, we're not just speaking of uh, just making prayer and uttering Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa lahu akbar, wa la ilaha illallah, and so on. We're talking about after we do the physical movement of the prayers, and we get up out of that, and we walk around as though we're still in that sajda position, that submitting position to the Rabbil Alameen. So if you get that from the prayer where you see that I'm walking around in prayer. When I see my brother, when I see my sister, when I see this creation that Allah has created, I'm still in a state of prayer, gratitude, and thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this particular verse 2441, Allah is putting a wa in between wa salatihu, that is his prayer, and his way of glorifying Allah. So what is the way of Muslims to glorify Allah? What is the way of human beings to glorify Allah? It is to be upright and straight, establish the prayer, the ritual prayer, and do good deeds, and be a vicegerent, a custodian of the earth, a custodian of the universe. So Allah is letting you know that prayer is one thing, but a tasbihahu, that is his way of glorification, that is the human being, because it's talking about individual human beings. Again, I give you the translation. Each person knows his prayer. The who means his. Wasalatihu, wasalatihu, his way of praise and thanks to God. So I think this is very, very important because we have the beautiful ayah in the Quran where Allah speaks of the, uh, or reveals really in the Surah 87, He reveals, Sabihismi rabbikal ala ladhi khalaqa fa sawwa walladhi qaddara fahada So many would translate this uh, Verse 1 is saying that we should glorify the name of God. And so that means to them that you should just say Allah many times, like they do in what they call vicar circles. Sometimes they do it for hours and hours, you know. And so that time where they're sitting, they could be out making money. They could be out toiling the soil. They could be out doing da way, you know? And so I'm saying to you in a humble way that I believe that when God says glorify the name, don't mean his physical name, Allah, 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 Allah. Like the Christians say, there's power in the name of Jesus, you know? No, there's power in you and I being aware of the magnificence of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Us being aware of the celestial bodies and how they yes bahoon how they just swim in an orbit in the sky in an orderly fashion why is it that the sun comes up at a particular time every every morning and sets at a particular time every night and we have sun charts to tell us about this exactness that Allah has set forth in this universe so I would say to you, so glorify the essence and the power of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is highly glorified and exalted is he. So if you want to spend time in the 
you know, zikr circles, that's your prerogative. But I encourage you to understand that the word ismun that doesn't necessarily just mean name. Like you ask me, what is my name? Ma ismuka, what is your name? I say, ismi Sadiq. That's my name. But what does the name mean? It means a truthful person. So the question is, am I being truthful? If your name is uh, Abdul Hakim, Hakim is one of the names of God. So if you just sit down all night long and say, El Hakim, El Hakim, El Hakim, <clears throat> or if you just reset all of the attributes of Allah over and over again, it's some value in, it in the sense that you're focusing on the Creator, but El Hakim means to be wise. So that means that if your name is Abdul Hakim, you should be about acquiring knowledge, right? So I hope I'm making my point clear to you that name doesn't always mean the, the, the word. In fact, I've heard it said, and I believe it's true, that when Allah reveals in the Quran, in the Surah Baqarah, he said, he taught Adam the names of things they translated as. But really, God is letting us know that he taught Adam the nature of things. In other words, he looked at that lion, said, wow, let me study him, see what he does and, and what he doesn't do, you know? We know that the, the lions, uh, they hunt at night and they, and they sleep during the day. So you don't expect to see a whole lot of lions running around uh, uh, during the day, you know? So you start examining, Adam started examining these animals and whatnot, and he knew something about his nature. And so after he knew something about his nature, then he gave that thing a name. And that goes for everything. And many times the name has something to do directly with the nature of the animal or whatever the case might be that we are codifying or naming. So you should know that God is saying, when he says, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, he's telling you with the essence and my power, not in the name of God, because God, that's just the word. Allah is just the word. But who is Allah and what is Allah is set forth where? In his Asma'ul Husna, those excellent attributes that he sets forth in the Quran. And even those attributes cannot give us the total idea of what these attributes are about. When we say Allah is El Basir, the all seeing one, can you imagine that this God, he has given the eagle the vision from the top of a mountain to see a mouse scurrying in the bushes two miles away. So Allah is El Basir, the all seeing one. That indicates that he sees the whole universe. Praise be to Allah. And as he said to us, high above what you ascribe to me. I'm high above anything that you ascribe of me and you conceive me to be. Praise be to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you know, the peacock, I was here in, uh, I think it was near Gross Point, Michigan, and I happened to uh, have to do some work on my job as an insurance adjuster at that time. And uh, I walked into the uh, Fisher Manor, whatever they call that place, and I saw the peacock doing the maiden dance. That's glorifying Allah in a physical way, right? But we know after the mating dance, we know what takes place. That male is trying to show off for the female so that he can, or for they, can procreate. Praise be to Allah. So we see the birds, how they get on the telephone lines in some kind of system or order before they go south. Because it gets cold here up in Michigan, you know. So you look at all of these animals and all the things that they do, and that is their tashbihahu, but also they have a salat too. They have a prayer too. The rooster in the morning, he makes that noise. Wake up the people. 
wake up his cohorts, <laughs> you know? So we know that Allah has given the human being a nature and a way of prayer and also a way of glorifying him through acquiring the knowledge, doing good, uh, being useful to the, to the society and so on and, and so forth. So again, wa salatihu wa tasbihahu. Praise be to Allah, 2441. So sabaha means to be immersed in something. So we want to be immersed in obeying Allah. And as I mentioned to you earlier, Allah uses yesbahun, using the same verbal roots, seen by and ha, in relationship how the planets and the stars and all of that are in orbits in the universe here. Praise be to Allah. So this same picture of the celestial bodies swimming in an orbit constantly, incessantly on a timed, you know, way. And we know that at some point in time, the sun is going to fizzle out, the moon is going to fizzle out. Everything physical has a perishing point. But praise be to Allah, we know that that sun and that moon is going to be here, according to the scientific uh, observation, for a long, long, long time. Praise be to Allah. So, you know, I went to the Niagara Falls. In fact, I've been there many times. I don't even want to count how many, but I have been there a few times. And uh, when it gets cold in Buffalo, New York, in that area there, you would think that the water would freeze up, right? But the power of that water and its goal is to get down into the Niagara River and it's constantly moving. You see a little, you know, frost area there and whatnot, but the power of that water reaching its goal to fall down in the Niagara Falls River is ongoing, nonstop. So this is what we as Muslims, we as human beings want to be about. We can't be perfect, but let us try. Let us make supreme effort in trying to immerse ourselves in devotion to Allah. Again, subhanahu wa ta'ala, highly glorified and exalted is he. So if you are listening, please, if you hear someone say, subhanahu wa ta'ala, then please correct them. Please correct them. And I'm sure that any sincere Muslim would be appreciative of the correction. So I found it very interesting in looking up the uh, verbal root seen by Ha in the Quran that Allah mentions in Surah 57, verse 1, Surah 59, verse 1, Surah 61, verse 1, he reveals the following. سَبْحَ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Whatever is in the heavens and the earth exalts Allah. And he is the exalted, the mighty, the wise. So when, he, when they translate it as whatever in the heaven and the earth exalts Allah, it's really talking about that's the way the dog does, that's the way the cat does, that's the way the sun does. It obeys Allah. It obeys Allah. But we as human beings have a way of disobeying Allah. So we want to stop being disobedient to Allah and glorify him and exalt him per chance that Allah will exalt us and make life smooth and easy for us and for the rest of the humanity by our human example of obeisance to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here he changes it up a little bit in Surah 62, verse 1, where he reveals using the present tense now. The sabaha is the past tense, past perfect tense. Where here he says, 
يسبح لله ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وما في الأرض مالك مالك كل قدوس العزيز الحكيم translated whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on earth is doing it right now is exalting Allah the sovereign the holy the pure the exalted in might the wise praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that same ayah that I just uttered is changed up a little bit in the surah 64 verse 1 so here Allah is starting these surahs out with some derivative of sabaha. So it's got to be important. This creator is not just haphazardly putting this Quran together. So he reveals in the 64.1, again, yusat behu. And this is the second form, present or present continuous form. Meaning that this should go on, on and on and on. It's, it should be going on now. It should go on and on and on. You said, Behold, the Lahi Mathis and my Wati, where my Phil Ardi, Lahul Moku, Lahul Hamdu, Wahua Allah, Kuli Shai in Kadir. Praise be to Allah, the cherished and sustain of all of the worlds. And let me get the translation of 6419. Thought I had put it in my uh, notes that I had uh, typed up, but it's not there, so just bear with me for a second. 64.1. And usually I, I could just translate it uh, from what I know about the language, but uh, I'm rushing. I want to just go ahead and give the Abdul Yusbali translation that you're familiar with. Whatever is in the heavens on earth does declare the praises and glory of Allah. To him belongs the dominion and to him belongs praise, thanks, and gratitude. And he has power over all things at all times. Praise be to Allah, the cherisher and sustainer of all of the world and all of the knowledge bases. So, I want to read just a little short uh, excerpt from some comments made by Imam Waruf Din Muhammad. May Allah grant him peace. Allah is salam. He says, or, or, or ordered, I don't like these extremes of opinions that say I'm not supposed to care about myself as a black man or I'm not to have a particular interest in black people. I am. I'm a family man, and no one would tell me I'm not supposed to have any particular interest in my family. I also have a family that's a little distance away called my ethnic family or my racial family. And if I neglect it, then my soul won't be satisfied. God has put in my soul to want to respect my immediate family and also any ethnic group to want to see my immediate family in a good picture and to also see my ethnic group in a good and dignified picture. So I believe that when the Imam Warfi Muhammad was, was coming forth and setting up this uh, world community of Islam in the West, basically of the ethnic group, the African Americans, those of us who were brought over here, kidnapped from Africa on the boats and so on, we know that horrible history. So he's saying that he should identify with them and he should have some real strong appreciation for his family. We all should. But the family is the base from which the society grows. You've got a good family and others have good families and then we come together as communities and be pleasing to Allah as one community, inshallah, even though we have different ethnic groups. So we know from being out in the world that these 
different ethnic groups like the Pakistanis and the uh, Syrians and the Algerians, etc. They clash with one another. They have an Algerian masjid here where they don't go to the Syrian masjid. They got an Albanian masjid where the, the uh, Pakistanis may not go. All of this kind of stuff is reality. So Imam Muhammad is letting it be known that uh, I want to reach out and have interaction and alliances and, and, and cordial relations with you all, but I do have to focus on my people. In fact, this African-American Muslim is probably more in need than all of the other ones in terms of financial wherewithal, but in terms of loving for our brothers what we love for ourselves and, and do a da'wah and trying to uh, uh, be upright and fast the month of Ramadan and all of that, many of us do much better than those who were born as Muslims and came over here to America. In fact, we know the reality is many of them come over to America so they could be free to get material stuff and don't care about the fact that selling alcohol is wrong or selling lottery tickets is wrong and so on and so forth. So I commend Imam Muhammad for always identifying with his people, his family, firstly, but he, we know, reached out to others too. So when I read that, it, it spurred me into talking about us being in a good picture. And you know, as I know right now while I'm speaking, there are other imams in our African American community, community that are doing khutbahs. And some of them will get up and say, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, over and over again, and they'll probably do it again and again if it doesn't reach their ears that that's incorrect. They'll probably continue to say Abdullah with an Aleph instead of Abdullah if they're not corrected or their coat is not pulled. So you should pull anybody's coat to get it right. And as I indicated in previous goodbyes, and I have it right on the, uh, uh, in my book on the first page, Wa kalimatullah hi yal'ul ya wallahu azizun hakim. And the words of Allah are exalted to the heights, El Ulya. And He is the mighty, the wise. So, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means something exalted higher than everything else. Ta'ala is a sixth form perfect tense verb. In other words, Allah is up here and everything else is down here in comparison. But we know that we can't really compare anything with God. That's why we say Allahu Akbaru min kulli shay. Allah is greater than anything that you endeavor or try to compare with him. He's greater than that. Praise be to Allah. So you should know again that it's Subhanahu Sub like Subaru Hanahu wa ta'ala. And so my daughter, she told me, she said, maybe you shouldn't tell them on Facebook that you are an Arabic pronunciation policeman, you know? And they may think that you're more concerned about uh, pronunciation than you are the understanding of the Quran. I said, you're right. I definitely don't want them to think that. And so when I first began to learn Arabic, that was my focus all the time. I want understanding. I wasn't interested in uttering the words and reciting and doing tajweed and all of that. And I'm still not interested in it in the sense of uh, thinking that I'm going to woo the people with my melodious voice, which I don't have <laughs> in my judgment. But I'm interested in getting you and myself to be students of the Quran so we can understand the Quran, so we can get the utility out of this glorious Quran. So let me make dua. Mabana atmim lana Nurana wakfir lana innaka ala kulli shayin kadir. Our Lord, complete our life for us, forgive us. For surely you have power over all things at all times. So, I put a few other items on the uh, internet and uh, see me as a, a friendly Arabic 
pronunciation observer as opposed to saying that I'm a policeman, you know, because people don't like police many, many times. But we do have some good police officers now. I saw a police officer that helped a guy uh, get some gas when his car had ran out of gas on the expressway, you know. So there's some good ones out there, and there's some bad ones out there. And as they say, one monkey don't stop no show. <laughs> okay, so in recent years, and some of you have heard me say this before, I'm trying to come to the close. We've been saying, Jumu'ah Mubarak. And during the time of Imam Muhammad, I don't recall anyone saying that. In fact, I don't recall anyone saying it except in the last three, four, maybe five years or more. And so I've seen different posts where some of the uh, people were saying that that's big, that's innovation for you all to be running around talking about Jumu'ah Mubarak, right? I don't believe it's innovation or anything like that, but I would say to you that if you're going to say a blessed Jumu'ah, then get the grammar right. Get the noun and adjective gender agreement right. And why should you get it right? Because Allah has it right in the Quran. He uses noun and adjective gender agreement throughout the Quran. Throughout the Quran he uses it. So if you say Ramadan Mubarak, that's good because Ramadan is a masculine noun. Mubarak is a masculine adjective. But Jumu'ah has a feminine T on the end. So if you look at Surah 62, you'll see the word, and it appears in the Quran one time. Jumu'atun. So if you're going to say Jumu'atun, you have to add Mubarakatun if you want to modify it with an adjective. So I again say to you, help your brother and help your sister so that they won't be looked at as being void of proper knowledge of the usage of the Arabic grammar that Allah uses in the Quran. And as the Imam said, he want to see us as an African American race or ethnic group in a good picture. So if you keep running around talking about Jumu'ah Mubarak, that's not going to put you in a good picture in the mindset of those who know. And I'm one of those who know because I went to school and I learned noun and adjective gender agreement from my professor, Dr. Abdul, Abdul Munem Shaker from Africa, Egypt, Africa. Praise be to Allah. So I hope you hear me. I heard one of the African-American brothers reportedly say that yeah, it doesn't really make that much difference to put that uh, feminine uh, sound on Mubarak. Well, if you want to follow what Allah has revealed and follow the grammar that Allah has set forth, then you would rush to do it. Jumu'ah Mubarakah. Okay. Praise be to Allah. Again, the cherish and sustainer of all of the worlds and all of the knowledge bases. Another thing, too, when you get an opportunity to, if you can read Arabic, look at the word proclamation. Quran. I'm translating Quran as proclamation. Quran. It's not Quran or Quran. There's a Hamza there with a Fatah and an Aleph to lengthen it. So that's ah, ah. So Kur, like you pause on that R, that Ra, make a stop. Kur, and then the name An. You know An, right? You probably got some relatives or somebody in your contacts whose name is An. So Kur, An. So that should flow all throughout the community if you are a person who loves for your brother and sister, what you love for yourself, and you want to have us as a ethnic group seen in the good picture that Imam Muhammad referred to in that brief uh, excerpt that I read to you a little while ago. So in coming uh, to the close of this, I'm going to make this uh, a part two uh, when I talk more about Sabaha. But I do want to take you to a beautiful part of the uh, Quran, and I just got excited about it. You know, you can sit in a dhikr circle and get excited about Allah, but isn't it better for you to start studying what Allah has done, how he has caused bugs to live in hot lava, 
He said, well, how did he do that, you know? <laughs> so there's all kinds of wonderful, marvelous things that are awaiting us if we just take the time to study and be like Adam, had the ability to understand the nature of things and then give that thing a name. So Allah says that he taught Adam the nature of things. Kulaha, all of it, all of her. He uses kulaha, why her? Because the samawad is seven heavens. When you have a plural noun, the structure is that you give it a singular possessive ending. Kulaha, all of her, all of it. Praise be to Allah. So that tells you and I that within you and I, we have the ability to understand this entire Samawad. When we say understand it, we won't be able to duplicate it. <laughs> we won't be able to, to uh, uh, outstrip Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah has set this universe up so that we can explore and get, as the Imam hollered more than one, Sakhawa, he has rendered for our service, what is in the heavens, what is in the earth, and what is between the both of them. Sakhara, seen Kha and Ra. And why is on my mind before I go to this, this verse, I don't know a lot about the uh, the science of the letters, uh, what they call Balaga, but I do know a little bit about it just from going to dictionaries. To give you a, a quick point of it, you go into the Arabic dictionary and you look at the letter Ra, you'll see that it has a lot to do with movement. Rahiba, he rode. Rasama, he drew. Rafa'a, he was raised up high. Uh, Ratala to 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 recite in slow rhythmic tone. The word tartil is used uh, in the Quran. So Ra has something to do with movement. You'll find that the letters Sheen, that is S H, and Seen has something to do with something that that moves also, that flows also. So. Seen has something to do with flowing and moving in a particular direction, if you will. I'm talking about the root of uh, this subhanallah. The ba, you'll find it means something that stays and remains. Bata means he remained. Bait is house. That's a house that you remain and you live there, you know. You're established there. al baqi the one who remains, that is Allah. So the bad has something to do with remaining somewhere. So you and I should be flowing in devotion to God, remaining there, ha, in a state of praise, gratitude, and thanks. So some might argue, oh, that's, that don't really add up. Well, I think that uh, you should look at the reality of what Allah wants. And he definitely wants us to be flowing like that Niagara Falls and swimming in an orbit of devotion to him. And he definitely wants us to be in a state of hamd, that is praise. So this word, subhana, it has a noon on the end. That makes that what we call the intensive form. So, you know, Sabaha is the root, but then Allah adds the Aleph and the Noon, and it means that this is something you'd be intensely in a state of glorifying Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, let me conclude, conclude with these wonderful ayahs in the uh, Surah 37, verses 180 through 182. And it reads as, as follows Subhana Rabbika Rabbil. Aziz Izzati, pardon me, Rabbil Izzati Amma Ya Saifun. Glory to thy Lord, Rabbika, the Lord of honor and power.
This is one of the attributes of Allah that's not mentioned in the 99. Rabbil Izzat, Izzati, the Lord of honor and power. Rabbil, again, Rabbil Izzati, Amma Yasifun. He is free from what they ascribe to him. In the next ayah, 181, 37, 181. Wa salamun alal mursaleen. And peace upon the messengers. But we thank Allah for Muhammad and Isa ibn Maryam, Maryam, pardon me, Jesus, the son of Mary. We're thankful for Ibrahim. We're thankful for Sulaiman. All of the 25 prophets that Allah set forth in the Quran and those that we don't know about and those that Allah did not mention in the, in the Quran. We thank Allah for these messengers that's given us truth that will help our spirituality, our morality, and our material success. So again, wa salamun ala al-mursalim. And then Allah concludes the uh, surah so beautifully. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And I will conclude with that as well for today. So inshallah I will do a part two to this particular khutbah. So I hope that you did learn and remember Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not that I just give you the, the proper pronunciation. I tried to explain something about it. And we know, too, that when someone is reciting Quran and they make a mistake, those who know should humbly say, Subhanallah. That's tradition, culturally. There's no command in the Quran that says that. But it's saying, in a nice way, that Allah is the one that is free from all imperfection. So that word has that idea of to be free from imperfection, but it also means for us to be immersed in endeavoring to glorify and obey our Creator. Praise be to Allah, the cherished and sustainer of all of the worlds and all of the knowledge bases. And I also mentioned to you the proper pronunciation of this book that Allah revealed. And when you think that uh, you would show some regard for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by pronouncing the name of the book correctly. Kur and Kur and there shouldn't be any dispute about that. If you say Quran, you put in an I in there. If you say Quran, a, a, a Qur, Quran, you put an I in there. And if you say Quran, then you're not putting the sukun, pardon me, on the rock. So you got to put that sukun on the rock. You got to stop, make an abrupt stop on that rock. Qur and Alamel Quran. He teaches the Quran. And lastly, I said to you, it is Jumu'ah Mubarakah. Not Jumu'ah Mubarak. People send me Facebook messages and they do it to the whole, you know, Facebook, you know, viewing audience or reading audience. And if they say Jumu'ah Mubarak, and I put in there Jumu'ah Mubarakah, they don't get it. <laughs> I remember years ago, I'm, I'm closing, I remember years ago, uh, I would go to this gas station and uh, uh, I knew the phrase, uh, I said, Kefa Haloka, the brother would say, uh, uh, Alhamdulillah, wa anta, and I say, Alhamdulillah, and so I asked him one day, you say Alhamdulillah, and I said, Alhamdulillah, I said, why? He said, because Allah has a grammatical rule in the Quran, or at least this is an established rule in our pronunciation patterns of the Arabic language. Whenever a E, I repeat, whenever an E or a Kasra comes before Allah, the sound becomes flat on Allah. Another example, we don't say Bismillah, we are supposed to say Bismillah, 
because there's a E on that mean, bismi. So you say bismillah instead of bismillah. Alhamdulillah, we got a lee, kasra before Allah. So that's why we say alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. If you don't believe me, listen to the more respected Qaris or reciters of the Quran, readers of the Quran, and you will hear most of them say, Alhamdulillah, Bismillah. So I conclude with that, and I pray Allah that I did say something of benefit to you, and know that. We talk about spiritual matters and devotion to God in terms of our spiritual and moral life, but we also want to be conscious of getting our share of this material world. And Imam Muhammad emphasized it over and over again. And don't forget your share of the material world, the dunya. So I recite now the Iqama. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Hayya ala salah, hayya ala al-falah. Qad qamit al-salah, qad qamit al-salah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. No way to Salatul Jumu'ah. Lillahi Rabbil Alameen. That is, I intend to make the Jumu'ah prayer to the Lord of all of the worlds. Allahu Akbar Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar Rahmanir Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim Sirat al-lazina in'amta alayhim Ghayri al-magdubi alayhim Wal-an-do'al-lin Ameen Ar-Rahman Allama al-Qur'an خلق الإنسان ألمه البيان الشمس والقمر بخسبان والنجم والشجر يسجدان والسماء رفعها ووضع الميزان ألا تتغوا في الميزان وأكموا الوزن بالقسط ولا تكسروا الميزان وأرضع وضعها للأنام فيها فاكهة والنكل ذات الأخمام والحب ذو أصف وريحان فبأي لا إرمكما تكذبان الله أكبر سمي الله لمن Hamidah Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Bismillahir
Allahu Akbar Sami Allahu Liman Hamida Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Rabbi habli hukmaw wa hikna bi salihin Waj'alli lisana sitkan fi akhirin Waj'alli min wa watati jannatin na'in Waj'fi liyabi innahu kana min ad-dalim Wa la tuksuni yawma yubatun Our Lord Bestow upon us wisdom, unite us with the righteous, grant us honorable mention on the tongue of truth among the latest of the generations. Make us inheritors of the garden of bliss and joy, and forgive our forefathers for many of them who are astray, and do not let us be in disgrace and humiliation on the day that we are raised for the final judgment. Amen. That concludes the Jumu'ah prayer, but please indulge me for a few moments to do a commercial. For those of you who do not know, I have written the book entitled Lukatuk Tanzil, that is the language of revelation, classical Arabic language instruction with exercises and Quran commentary. It was endorsed by Imam Wahdi Muhammad. And also was endorsed by an African Ghanaian sheikh. He's called Sheikh Ali S. Ali. Ali Suleiman Ali out of Canton, Michigan. He proofread it and everything. He was very pleased with it. And he also set forth an, an, uh, an endorsement of it. So I would encourage you to secure the book. And I've made it very, very easy to follow, inshallah. And I do have a... Uh, tape that will help the beginners with the pronunciation of the Arabic letters and the sound system. So you can secure the book by going to SadiqJihad.com on the internet. I have a shopping cart there. You could go to my cash app account, dollar sign Sadiq Jihad, and send $50 and Set forth your address and whatnot there on the Cash App system, or send me an email to Sadiq 
S-I-D-D-E-Q at MSN.com with your phone number and I can call you and we can do a transaction over the telephone or the cell phone, I should say. They call telephone the cell phone distinctly, right? Over the cell phone, inshallah. So I think that that will conclude uh, today's uh, presentation. And those of you who are local here in uh, the Detroit, Michigan area, I am a uh, seller of the uh, True Detergent, and I can give you a good price. So hit me up on my email, Sadiq at msn.com, and we could uh, work out something uh, as far as that liquid soap. So I close wishing you and your family a Jumuwa Mubarakat. Mubarakat. <laughs> Jumuwa Mubarakat. Please don't say Jumuwa Mubarak. That's against what Allah has revealed in terms of, again, noun, adjective, gender agreement. If a noun is feminine, the adjective should be feminine. But know that the feminine T is not always on feminine words. Like the word champson is a feminine word. It's viewed as a feminine word, but it's not a feminine T on it. The word harb sounds hard, don't it? That's war. But it's feminine. Why is it feminine? Because you shouldn't cut down the trees and kill the women and the children, you know? So there's logic to this point of femininity or masculinity to this or to that in the uh, wonderful Arabic language. And another phrase I like to give you, I got it from Wright's Grammar book. It goes like this. La yazalullahu muksinan ilaykum. Again, la yazalullahu muksinan ilaykum. That is, may Allah never stop being an excellent doer to you all. Here we're putting Allah in the active participle structure where we want him to be active and being good to you all. And then we close with the standard uh, salutation and I add a little bit to it. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu wa jannatuhu. That is, the peace of God be upon you the mercy of God and his blessings and his paradise in this life and in the life to come. Signing off. Thank you for listening.